Today's recipe calls for pumpkin puree and espresso powder. I'm going to show you how to make really simple pumpkin pancakes with an espresso whipped cream for the top. They're really delicious. So with that said, let's get started. The first thing we need to do to start this seasonal style breakfast is make our espresso whipped cream. Using a liquid measuring device, measure out one cup or 240 mils of heavy whipping cream. Pro tip, lightly shake your container of heavy cream for a few seconds before you pour it into the cup. The reason being is the milk fats may have separated from the milk while it has been stored. So a little shimmy and shake will bring it back to its thick consistency that it was meant to be. Grab a medium sized sauce saucepan that has a heavy bottom to it. Take the fatty liquid in the pan over to the thing that cooks things. Gently toss the pan over the heating element. Pour the cream into the pan. Crank the heat level to a low temp. All we're trying to do is warm the cream up. When it starts to ever so slightly bubble, then we know it's hot enough to add the espresso powder in. In a slow and steady stream, add in four tablespoons of instant espresso powder into the hot cream. While you are dumping with one hand, you should be also whisking with your other hand. Doing it this way will help ensure the caffeine powder will not clump up once it hits the cream. Really whisk your face off to ensure all the brown dust has fully dissolved into the hot fatty liquid. It's best to use a hot liquid because the espresso powder will dissolve a lot faster into the cream. It'll also bloom the powder giving us the distinct flavor and smell after the cream has changed colors we need to let it completely cool down and become cold again transfer things over to a medium-sized holding device that some folks call a bowl again scrape the pan clean when you've gotten everything you possibly could out of the pan and into the bowl place the cream in the fridge box it needs to be cold because the fat needs to re-solidify back to its natural solid state which will help hold the micro air bubbles that are whipped into the cream giving us the light, airy mass we know as whipped cream. Ah, uh, science. Also, the flavor will have time to intensify. Now we can start making our pancake batter. We'll start with the dry ingredients first. Dump two cups or 240 grams of all-purpose flour into a fine mesh strainer that is set over a medium-sized bowl. Next, add one teaspoon of ground ginger. Following that, we'll add pumpkin's BFF, also known as two teaspoons of ground cinnamon, then one teaspoon of ground mace, two teaspoons baking powder, one teaspoon baking soda, and lastly, half a teaspoon of allspice. Sift all the goods into one dusty mess. Push through any clumps that are left behind. This step is really helpful because ground ginger is notorious for being clumpy. It'll help start the mixing process of all the dry ingredients to make them into one. Add one teaspoon of sea salt to the bowl. Following the salt, add roughly a quarter teaspoon of fresh ground nutmeg. Lightly whisk your face off to bring it all together. You know you've mixed it well enough when you see a ton of little speckles of spices spread throughout your flour. Let's move on to the wet ingredients next. Acquire a medium sized bowl. To that we'll add in one large room temperature egg. Pro tip, crack the egg in a separate container. This way if we accidentally get any shells, we can easily pick it out. Following the eggy, add in three tablespoons of dark brown sugar. Whisk your face off to bring these two items together. The goal is to dissolve the sugar into the liquid of the egg. Whisking it for about a minute or two should get the job done. After magically making two things into one, we'll add one cup or 225 grams of the main character of the show, known as pure pumpkin puree. Do not use pumpkin pie filling. Whisk the thick orange goo into the sugar egg mixture. Add in one and one half cup or 350 mils of milk of your choosing. Next, add two tablespoons of melted butter. If you have brown butter, you should use that stuff. I was too lazy to make any. Make it rain the flavor additive of tablespoon of vanilla extract then give it a quick whisk it's time to combine the dry with the wet now add half of the dry dusty stuff to the bowl with the wet ingredients mix the goods until things are just incorporated in once that's happened add the last half of the dry stuff ditch the whisk and grab a rubber spat fold everything together until you cannot see any more of the flour mixture ensure you scrape the sides and bottom of the bowl when mixing flour likes to stick in these spots when making batter do not overwork the pancake batter doing so will develop the gluten in the flour which in turn will give us a dense and tougher pancake which nobody wants that means do not mix the batter until it's smooth if it's smooth then it's been over mixed 
When finished, the batter should be a little lumpy and bumpy, which is totally fine. Allow the batter to rest for 5 to 10 minutes before you cook it. This will let the lumps become hydrated. They will slowly dissolve into the rest of the batter. In the end, the batter will be a little thick, which will give the cakes good structure in the pan. They'll hold their round shape, being able to rise and to become fluffy. If it was over mixed and thin, then the batter would spread outward, making them thin and dense in texture. I'll be honest, I was making pancakes all wrong this whole time until I found this trick. We're going to make these pancakes even more heavenly by adding some egg whites. Snag a small bowl, crack two large eggs in, scoop out the yolks, save them, they can be used for another recipe, or you can just eat them. After scooping, thoroughly wash your hands really well. Now that there are only egg whites in the bowl, it's time to put in some hard work. Whisk and whisk and whisk and keep whisking your face off until the egg whites reach a stiff peak. Doing this by hand is a pain but is doable. You do not need fancy equipment to accomplish this task. But if you really wanted to, you can use a hand mixer or a stand mixer with a whisk attachment to get the job done. Whatever method you decide to use, it's imperative that your bowl is clean. There must not be any trace of yolks or any other type of fat like grease or oil in the bowl. These things will prevent the whites from foaming and creating a stable foamy stiff peak. A stiff peak is considered done when you can pick up the egg whites with the tip of the whisk. The foamy white stuff should stick to the whisk without falling off and should hold its shape on the tool. It should also have a small peak at the end that stands straight up, hence the name. It should look smooth, airy, and fluffy looking. You can over whip the egg whites, so ensure you stop once you hit the stiff peak level. If over whipped, it'll look grainy, watery, and will become flat. I went too hard and mine started to break, but I rolled with it anyways. It seemed to be fine, but don't be like me and over whip them. Now that you've whipped them into a new shape, it's time to fold them into the orange batter. Very, very, very gently do this step. We worked insanely hard to reach the fluffy, airy goodness. If you aggressively overdo it, you'll pop all the super little tiny air bubbles that are in the whipped egg whites, which will defeat the purpose of adding them to the batter. The whipped whites will cause the pancakes to rise during the cooking process, giving us a light, airy, and fluffy pancake. You can skip adding the extra egg whites if you wish. You'll still end up with a great pancake. The batter is finally done. Let's get to making these things. Snag your favorite non-stick pan and a scooping device, like a measuring cup or a cookie scoop. Take all the stuff over to the cooking element. Gently toss the pan on the burner. Crank the heat up to a medium level of heatness. Allow the pan to become nice and steamy hot. You can check the warmth level by dropping a few drops of water into the pan. If it sizzles and evaporates immediately, you know it's ready. Once ready, give the pan a light coating with some high heat nonstick spray. I'm using avocado oil. Wipe the pan with a paper towel to spread it around and to take out any excess oil. Scoop the batter into the pan. I used a one third cup for this job. You can gently spread the batter out to make the perfectly round cake if you would like. Use your scooping device to do this. Have patience and allow the pancake to cook for a few minutes. The best indication that it's ready to flip is when the top side is covered with a ton of air bubbles that have popped. So you should see a ton of little holes. When you see that, it's time to give them the old flippy floppy. Take the plastic pancake turner and place it on the edge of the pancake. In one quick swift motion, get underneath the cake to lift it up, then flip it. After it's flipped, allow it to cook on the other side for an additional one to two minutes, or until the center of the pancake springs back if you gently pushed on it. It's the same exact method you would use when baking a cake. Now that the first pancake is done, transfer it over to a holding device like a plate. Cover it with a clean kitchen towel to keep it warm while we make the rest of the pancakes. Before you add the next scoop of batter, wipe the pan again with a paper towel that we used earlier to soak up the excess oil. It should be soaked enough to coat our pan again. Repeat these same steps until all of the batter has been cooked off and you have a fat stack of cakes. You may have to adjust the heat by turning it down a little because the pan has become too hot. The pancakes will still cook on a lower temp because the pan will hold the residual heat still giving us enough hotness to cook the batter. You can also cook your pancakes on a griddle or even in a cast iron pan if you don't have a nonstick on hand. Check that fat stack of goodies out. 
Set them aside so we can finish making our espresso whipped cream. Take the cold cream out of the fridge box. Once again, like we've done too many times in this recipe, whisk insanely hard to make your whipped cream. Add in half a cup or 50 grams of powdered sugar for sweetness. You can also add more if you would like to make it sweeter. Also add a few small pinches of coarse ground kosher salt to enhance all the flavors. To make it taste even better, I added roughly two teaspoons of vanilla extract about halfway through the whisking process give it a quick taste test and adjust the seasoning as needed with more powdered sugar or a few more pinches of salt if you want more detailed instructions on how to make homemade whipped cream i have a video all about it that you can go check out after this one for whatever reason, I had trouble over whisking things when I filmed this video. My whipped cream broke because I overdid the whisking part, so I had to fix it. That's why it's lighter in color and in a different bowl. After the whipped cream is done, give it the old taste test. If the espresso flavor is a bit too strong for you, don't worry, we can easily fix that problem. Snag another bowl. To that, add as much cream as you think you'll need to mellow out the flavor. To achieve the color I got after fixing mine, I used roughly another half cup or 120 mils of cream. Once you've figured out how much you need, whisk the cream into a stiff peak like we were making whipped cream. After it's hit the stiff peak, transfer the plain whip into the espresso whipped cream. Gently fold things into one. Once fully combined together, give it another taste and adjust the sweetness level and seasoning on it. Keep doing this until you hit your desired level of flavor. Now that all of our components are done, let's plate this business up. Grab your favorite eating saucer, stack the cakes in the middle as high as you would like them to go, hit the top with a nice little spoonful of that espresso whip. To be extra bougie, we'll dust the entire thing with some powdered sugar. These were pretty fun to make because it's kind of a play on a pumpkin spice latte. To make the ultimate stack, Put goodies between each layer of pancake, like homemade Nutella, a cube of brown butter, or some whipped cinnamon butter, or even dried cranberries and walnuts. Whatever you decide to do, just enjoy. All right, now that our pumpkin pancakes are done, say that 10 times fast. But anyways, we're here to talk about pancakes, not do tongue twisters. They came out really delicious looking. They have a nice bright orange color to them. The tops and the bottoms got that golden color, so a little bit of caramelization to look aesthetically pleasing, but also bring a little flavor to the table. They look super light and fluffy and they're gonna be really tender and soft. The espresso whipped cream on top also looks super delicious. Overall, it just looks like a fat stack that you definitely wanna dig into. So let's do that. This is how soft they are. You can fold it and it doesn't break or it did kind of break, I guess. But anyways, looks super soft. So I don't believe in forks and we're gonna try it. These things came out super bomb. They're nice and pumpkin-y, which makes sense because they're pumpkin pancakes. You didn't have to be a rocket science to figure that one out. It's the perfect level of pumpkin-esque in there. It's not overpowering where it's gross and it's not underwhelming where you can't taste it. It's just at the perfect level of goodness. The next flavor we get is that cinnamon, which cinnamon and pumpkin go so well together. They're like two peas in a pod. And we get a nice base of flavor from all of our other spices, from the ginger and the nutmeg and all that other good stuff. And we get a little hint of vanilla as well that plays so well with the pumpkin. That golden crust that we got on the outside, known as the caramelization, also brings some flavor around, which is super tasty. They're not overly sweet, which is nice. Texture-wise, these things are absolutely crazy, insanely soft. They're like miniature cakes, just without all the extra sugar. And you could pretty much use these things as a pillow because that's how soft they are. And that's like the ultimate breakfast in bed. <laughs> Dad joke. But anyways, they're insanely soft and really tasty. So let's try it with some of our espresso whipped cream now. It's kind of a lot, but hey. Let's do it. The pancakes with the espresso whipped cream is very delightful. Pumpkin and coffee or espresso in this case is a nice pairing. It's a good combination together. The whipped cream itself brings a little extra sweetness and that vanilla extract to our pancakes as well. And heavy cream is just fat and of course fat is flavor. 
the espresso itself is slightly bitter, but it helps cut through the richness and fluffiness of our pancakes to make it a nice, well-balanced experience. Overall, it was a good combination. These pancakes are really simple to make and would make for a great fall breakfast or a dinner or a snack time or pretty much whenever you feel like eating pancakes, really. And if you really wanted to get bougie, you could probably make your own pumpkin puree by roasting a whole pumpkin yourself, but that seems like way too much work. You can also add some chocolate chips to them to really zhuzh it up, which sounds super tasty. So hopefully you enjoyed today's video. Thanks for watching. And I feel like I'm jacked up on caffeine right now because I just keep eating this espresso whipped cream. So I'm going to go do all the things, which I don't know what that entails, but I'll let you know. Probably just shit some dishes. But anyways, we'll see you on the next one. Probably a It would be a tongue twister because I can't even say the sentence without getting a tongue twist. You messed it up. Perfect level of pumpkin, pumpkin, pumpkin to be a rock, rocky, rocky, <laughs> and a delightful experience. I think my heart's gonna explode because I keep eating this espresso whipped cream all jacked up on caffeine. They're basically like miniature pancakes because they are pancakes. Good one. With the, pa the pump, old piece. Turn off.